Normans and welcome back to this week's Norman News at Home Edition. We are almost done with the school year, so congratulations and hang on there. Stay tuned for news on a neutralizing antibody being developed and more news on when the economy will fully reopen. Around the school in 30 minutes, this is the Norman News. Okay, so in the past weeks, we've talked about when our state will reopen. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and has there been any progress made? Yes, there has. According to the Los Angeles Times, California is rapidly speeding up, opening up the economy. But what does that consist of? Well, considering that California has faced an immense amount of pressure to reopen up the state, so far, our governor said that 53 of California's 58 counties can move into stage four of reopening if they file an application with the state. Counties that meet that criteria will be able to start opening up malls and restaurants. This could also mean the reopening of free spectator sports events and even hair salons by the first week of June. Progress is being made, so before you get discouraged, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Now to Jonah with some medical news. Thanks, Alana. The process of reopening the U.S. economy will enter a new phase as Memorial Day weekend approaches. By Wednesday, all 50 states will have begun lifting restrictions put in place to combat the coronavirus. Many public health officials and politicians, however, continue to raise concerns that increased activity would put Americans at greater risk of a new surge in infections. More than 1.5 million confirmed coronavirus cases have been recorded in the United States, where the death toll is nearing 90,000. Globally, there have been more than 4.8 million confirmed infections and 318,000 deaths. Now to Jackson with this week's sports news. Thanks, Jonah. One of the most famous moments in Jordan's career was the flu game. Jordan put up 38 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, and a block. Jordan was said to have flu-like symptoms, which made this moment even more memorable. Many have been trying to figure out what the real cause of the symptoms were. Well, in the last dance, Jordan and his trainers finally addressed the issue, saying that it was a case of food poisoning from bad pizza. Apparently, Jordan was hungry the night before the game and had ordered a pizza. Five men delivered the pizza, which was strange, but Jordan still consumed the pizza all by himself, and he became sick afterwards. Some believe that the pizza might have been tampered with. Craig Fight, the assistant manager of the Pizza Hut, claims the story is untrue. Either way, Jordan was able to overcome the sickness and put on a great performance. Now to Holden with some more news. Thanks, Jackson. John Krasinski just announced that his finale of his YouTube show, Some Good News, will now be taking a break. John shared a bunch of memorabilia from the show to make some ha people happy. It is without a doubt that John is trying to keep everyone smiling through these chaotic times, especially with the news that California will be extending its quarantine until August. He also brought it. He also brought in the cast of The Office to help host virtual weddings, prom, and graduation the, for the class of 2020. The A Quiet Place star is showing how much he cares to all his fans and people all over the world, and he. Sh and should all com and we should all commend him for it. Now to Riley with entertainment news. Thanks, Holden. Coronavirus is not stopping Kylie Jenner from spending money, as she bought a $36.5 million mansion in Holmby Hills. She shared the photos of the mansion via social media. The 15,350 square feet house includes cabanas, a game room, a chef's kitchen, a cinema, and obviously a swimming pool. Kylie is currently quarantining there as she did post TikToks of her and her best friend Stassi at the house. Now to Kayla with this week's movie review. Thanks, Riley. This week we're going to be talking about the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail. While not exactly a pandemic movie, Monty Python and the Holy Grail certainly showcases the bubonic plague. Its dark humor may seem even darker nowadays, but the famed bring out your dead scene still stirs up a chuckle. I can't take him like that. It's against regulation, says the coroner, referencing a man saying, I'm not dead. I feel happy. That's all for this week. Now grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and stay tuned. Tune for this week's new movie trailer.
once in a lifetime, there comes a motion picture which changes the whole history of motion pictures. A picture so stunning in its effect, so vast in its impact, that it profoundly affects the lives of all who see it. One such film is... Very good, thank you. Yes, thank you. Next, please. Once in a lifetime, there comes a motion picture which changes the whole history of motion pictures. Uh, yes, thank you. Next. Once in a lifetime! Oh, for goodness sake, let us do it. <clears throat> Once in a lifetime, there comes a motion picture which changes the whole history of motion pictures. Now, from the people who brought you the 39th anniversary re-release of Monty Python and the Holy Grail... And are already at work on the 41st anniversary re-release of Monty Python and the Holy Grail... ...comes the long-awaited 40th anniversary re-release of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it! Back in the cinemas in this special new edition. I told them we already got one. With up to 25% more peril. No, it's too perilous. We are the knights who say... Bring your friends. Carry coconut shells. Wear fancy dress. This isn't my nose, it's a false one. You could even sing along if you like. Now stop that. You're not going into a song while I'm here. See it again for the first time on the big screen. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberry. Or if you've never seen it, see it now for the first time. Or see it for the first time since you last saw it. Or if you're very old or very <laughs> ill, see it for what may be the last time. I'm not. I think I, I could pull through, sir. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Back in cinemas for the first time since the last time. God be praised. Thanks, Kayla. A new study found that the world has cut its daily carbon dioxide release by 17% ever since the pandemic shutdown. A week in April, the U.S. cut its use of carbon dioxide levels by one-third. China, being the world's biggest emitter of heat-trapping gases, cut down the carbon pollution by nearly a quarter, according to a study in the journal Nature Climate Change. And India and Europe cut down their release by 26 and 27%. This low of global emission levels has not been recorded since 2006. But if the world returns back to increasing the usage of pollution by next year, the temporary reduction amounts to a drop in the ocean, said a climate scientist at the University of East Angela. If the world could keep up the annual cuts without the pandemic for a couple of decades, there could be a decent chance the Earth can avoid warming another 1.8 degrees from now. But the goal is unlikely. If next year the world returns to the same pollution levels as 2019, it means the world has only got about a year worth of delay in hitting the extra 1.0 degrees of warming that leaders are trying to avoid. Now to Jacob with some more news. Thanks, Akira. A Roman Catholic priest in the Detroit area has taken aim to maintain social distancing during the coronavirus pandemic, using a squirt gun to shoot holy water. Photos posted on social media by the St. Ambrose Church shows the priest, Tim Pelk, shooting water into a car window as it stopped by the steps of the church on Easter. He wore a mask, face shield, and rubber gloves as further precautions against spreading the virus. The photos of the priest at the church have inspired many memes online. One shows the 70-year-old priest amid the fires of hell, directing the squirt gun at devil-like figures. The priest is concerned about how the Vatican might react to the photos circulating widely on the internet, but he said he hasn't heard anything yet. The idea was to find a way to continue the tradition of blessing Easter baskets despite the pandemic. Now to Phoebe with more news. Thanks, Phoebe. There's a new medical breakthrough from China to help treat COVID-19. Chinese scientists developed a neutralizing antibody 
that dramatically reduce the viral load in mice, providing both a therapeutic effect and a possible short-term immunity to COVID-19. Sunny Z, the director of Peking University's Advanced Center for Genomics, told the AFP that the drug has been successful in the animal testing stage. Neutralizing antibodies are produced by the human immune system to prevent a virus from spreading into new cells. Dr. Z said his team has been working day and night searching for a therapeutic antibody. Hopefully, the global scientific community will continue to share breakthroughs and work together to find an effective treatment or a vaccine. And until then, please remember the four life-saving critical steps. Wash your hands, social distance, wear a mask or face covering in public, and avoid taking Advil or Aleve. Now to Jonah with the weather. Hello, my name is Jonah Farman, and I'm here to bring you this week's live KBF for the forecast for the week of May 22nd, 2020. For those of you who are wondering what the weather is like outside due to the coronavirus. This week, Los Angeles will continue to see sunny weathers, with hot temperatures ranging from the high 70s to the mid 80s. Tomorrow, Sunday, brings warm temperatures with a high of 76 down to a low of 60. On Sunday, the last day of the week, we will see sunny skies with a temperature at a high of 81 degrees. Starting this up with a new week, later on, we'll see a bit warmer temperatures. Monday, we have a high of 86 degrees to a low of 64. On Tuesday, there will be a high of 85 degrees Fahrenheit. On Wednesday, there will be a high of 84 degrees to keep things warm. Thank you so much for watching this week's live Cape Out with a Forecast. I'm Jonah Farma. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Jonah, and good afternoon, Normans. Experts are warning the public against wearing a certain N95 masks with the front valves. They say the mask protects the people wearing them, but do not stop the virus droplets from escaping and infecting others. The masks are designed for construction workers to use and keep out dust and other particles, but not necessarily germs and particles that might be in the air carrying this infectious disease. Make sure to have masks that have healthy seal around your face and can really keep the germs away. Stay safe and have a great week, Normans. Thank you for watching this week's Norman News. We all hope that you're being safe at home. We'll see you next week.